Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one, The Last War, written by Echoing Cascade. The first attack had been monstrous. The crystal ship had appeared above the Australian continent on what was otherwise a normal day. There was no message of any kind, no indication of the imminent arrival. It simply materialized out of thin air. Then it dropped what looked like snowflakes made of light which spread throughout the world. It was beautiful, mesmerizing. That is until they started to make contact with the population. The sick, the dying, the old, the infirm, children and their parents disappearing out of existence. There were no screams, no remains, nothing. Those left received a single thought in the native tongue. Fight! The leaders of the world lost no time. The fury of Earth was going to be felt by these invaders. Old allies, better rivals, and eternal enemies alike, united for the first time in human history. Their purpose was simple. Kill these aliens, or die trying. At first, they tried conventional weapons on the alien ship. Every fighter that could take to the sky, every seaworthy ship, and any kind of armament launched an all-out attack on the aliens to no avail. It was after the first nuclear strikes that the ship dropped soldiers. Trance, lucid spiders are the size of a horse. They possessed a poison that would dematerialize its victim in a matter of seconds. They destroyed the majority of the armies of the world in the first six months of the war. Sarpedon Ardina was looking at the ragtag team that he would lead in what would be humanity's final battle. If everything goes as planned. He had been a master sergeant before the invasion, for a country that no longer existed. By now, he was known by what was left of humanity as the General. On the day the spiders began their attack, he had led his soldiers and anyone else he could find into bunkers originally created to house heads of state. From there, he organized what was left of the armies of Earth into a resistance. In the following year, they had made some headway, finding out how to actually destroy the spiders and counteract their poison. Bullets dealt little to no damage to the creature, but bladed weapons would cut them as if they were flesh and bone. Their poison could be stopped by injecting near-fatal amounts of adrenaline into the victim. Even so, victory was not an option. Since the invasion had begun, the artificial snow had not stopped, and as a result, no children had been born, and the dead, no matter how they died, disappeared like they never existed. Humanity was a race without a future, so they chose the only path left for them. Vengeance. They had found several nuclear missile caches that politicians insisted before the invasion didn't exist. They would arm them all and launch them, not against the alien ship, but against every landmass still untouched by radiation. If the aliens wanted the planet, they could have it. Sarpedon led the team into what was formerly Russian territory. Every soldier in his squad was armed with a spear, axe, sword, or machete, and each carried a syringe with enough adrenaline to survive a single spider bite. The battle was fierce. The spiders seemingly knew what they were trying to do and wouldn't have it. Nonetheless, they pushed on, and out of sheer determination, spite, and hatred, they succeeded. The last thing Sarpedon saw before the blinding flash of the missile leaving the silos he lifted a middle finger and pointed it in the general direction where the alien ship should be and was then consumed by flames. Sarpedon then opened his eyes. He was in his office again. He looked around to faces of the people who had been with him when the invasion started. Some of them long dead and all of them just as confused to be alive as he was. Sarpedon, what the f- before he could finish the sentence, a telepathic broadcast was sent to all of humanity. A pompous-looking spider dressed with jewels and fine silks appeared to all. We are the Slanesh. We have come to conquer you. The spider creature bowed its head before continuing. The current message is being sent only to those who participated in the war. Do not worry for your meek and young. 
Sarpedon was in the same state as the rest of humanity, furious and confused, but as the creature continued speaking, the fury became anger. The anger, annoyance, and the annoyance, understanding. The Slamesh were a warrior species. They once tried to conquer all known sentient beings in the universe. They had almost succeeded when a coalition rose up to oppose them. Trillions had died, countless worlds reduced to space debris, and many species killed to the last. They felt too many resources were lost in this type of conquest, so they chose a new method. War by simulation. They showed their prey the foolishness of resisting and how powerless they were to stop them. The psychic message ended with the Slamesh warlord telling humanity that the war simulation would restart if they did not surrender. After the broadcast, Serpentin looked at the people in his office. Linda Trevor, his secretary, he never liked her. To be honest, he always felt she only got the job because of her father. Last time he had seen her alive was when she jumped on top of a spider to stab her with a pen on the early stages of the invasion, long before they knew how to survive a bite. Donovan Brown, an old friend. He had joined the army with him. He died, making sure that he had time to enter the launch codes for the Russian vicinity. Miriam Collins, a field medic, who became his wife, who he vowed he would formally marry and grow old with now that he could. The phone in his office rang nearly non-stop for the next hour. Every world leader, every top-ranking military officer tried to contact him with a single query. What are your orders, General? The Slamesh warlord was awaiting humanity's unconditional surrender. No species chose to oppose them after the final wall simulation. The system was perfect. After all, why destroy them when they could simply break their spirits at little to no cost? He was contacted by the human they called the General. He had gained great notoriety during the simulation and now spoke for them. He expected bravado, maybe insult too, but ultimately a call for mercy and their surrender. Yet instead, You ask us to surrender or you will force us to fight this war again. Now that we know there are no consequences, and you think this scares us? <laughs> Get your shitty hollow deck ready, Spock. Let's make this the best two out of three. The Slamesh ultimately left after best four out of seven. You don't try and conquer the insane. You best just avoid them and move on. End of story. Story number two. It is done, written by Rednall 97. It was done. It was over. The last human was dead. It took thousands of years, billions of planets, and uncountable amounts of money, ships, and lives. When it was done, the details and how exactly the war started were long lost. All that is known is the Okovar made the first contact with the humans 1,032 years ago. Humans, at the time, had about a dozen systems near the galactic rim. So, they had advanced space flight, but it was obvious they couldn't compete with the Federation, neither in size nor tech. Nor so he thought. Through a series of misunderstandings and unfortunate events, we escalated much faster than could be explained away or worked around. A war was started. At first, it was pretty harmless. A shuttle here, a patrol boat there. But that too escalated at an astounding pace. Originally, the Federation had no intention to fight those humans. But with the clever speechwriters and even better lawyers, they pulled us into the war before we knew what was going on. In the beginning, there was still hope for peace. But after the Akava broke some rules of an old human law book called the Geneva Convention, and then refused to hand the general which gave the order over to them for trial, the humans declared a uh, total war. We were confused what that meant. Were they already fighting with all that they could? Not even close. They fought hard, yes. But after that declaration, the war turned into horror. Humans stopped taking POWs, and if they did, they tortured the prisoners for every scrap of information they possessed. They did not attack civilian targets, but every house and every town that gave as little as a sip of water to a chief of soldiers was declared a valid military 
target, thereby turning our own population against us. Then they mobilized. You see, the humans don't have soldiers and non-soldiers. Everyone has a potential for it. And after that attack, every single human wanted to help to fight. Those who could hold a gun were trained to be a soldier deadlier than three of our best combined. Those too old trained the new recruits, and those too young worked in the factories. But worst of all, they declared the weapons limitations null and void. Oh yes, they had horrifying weapons before. But what came next? Some people went mad just by seeing the aftermath. Nuclear bombs against infantry. Pathogens that force your own immune system to eat you from the inside. Chemicals that cause you to feel like you're being burned alive. Not a swarm sclearing entire planets within days. And that's not even the worst of them. But now it's over. The last human is dead. It should be time for celebration, but it doesn't feel like that. Why doesn't it? Because something feels wrong. No matter how hard they fight, a species so young that it only inhabited a few planets should have no chance to holding out this well as they did. They ended four species, including the Okavar, who started it all. They managed to hold out for a millennium against the entire Federation, and they killed about 50 of us for every one of them. That's more than three quarters of the GF population dead. My computer pulls me out my thoughts with a chime. The decoding of the last message received by the main communications hub. I reach to dismiss it when I notice the point of origin. Out of system. Have we missed something? Is there still somewhere a hidden outpost? I tap to open the message and read it. And then I read it again. No, this cannot be. That's impossible. But it would explain how they did it. The room starts spinning. This cannot be. I feel my heart rate rising dangerously. That is impossible! My mind starts to fade. We are doomed! My body collapses lifelessly onto the floor while the monitor continues to explain the message. Milky Way command to Andromeda outpost. Distress call received. Fleets 4 to 15 dispatched. ETA one month after arrival of this message. End of story. This is a special thank you to the one, the only, the legendary Erak Hino, who has become the only Tier 6 patron. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan95, Fjord Giol, Meridian117, Elithia, Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albarden Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.